We have Renee in Little Rock, Arkansas, who is born again Christian, and you're on with Claire and Tracy. Hi, Claire, Tracy, and did I hear Jen also? Well, Jen was supposed to be on today, but she had some problems that came up, so Claire was nice enough to come down and help us out and fill right. in. Right. Okay. Hi, Renee. I can't see you. I'm just on my phone. How are you? Then you're oh, missing the hair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Hair. Maybe when I'm done, I'll get a chance to uh, yeah. take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my question was for um, Tracy. Sure. I was hoping that I'd get met, but I oh. tried calling the show. <laughs> I apologize that I'm not No, that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, in addition to Tracy. Okay. I'll try to be more aggressive. Both of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't have to do that. Okay. I don't miss him that much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'd love to hear from him. But oh my, my question was about um, a video that I watched uh, several times uh, when Matt was referring to I guess he called it his deconversion. I'm calling okay. it the deconversion. I know a little you bit know. about it. I you know, warn you that yeah. it's it's tough when you have to speak for someone else. But if we're going to talk about yeah, that, that's cool. I will try to answer where I feel comfortable answering. Well, that's why I said you also, because I didn't know if you have had your own deconversion. I think I heard you mention on one program that mm -hmm. you were brought up or raised or went yep. to Church of Christ. Yes, I did. Okay. And what, so I don't, I didn't seek out you a video about your, I guess. There probably wouldn't be one. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, can you give me a little bit of a background sure. about what happened and what? Yeah, kind of, yeah. And, and it's also at the, um, what is it, the, the, uh, Atheist Community of Austin website, um, I have my deconversion oh. story in text. And so you're welcome to read it there if you want oh, the, the, okay. the fuller version. Um, but yeah. I mean, basically, there were some things that occurred. The main thing I think that changed my head was reading about how the Bible was produced, right? So when I started looking up, I, I, I realized at a point that I was talking to a friend of mine in college, and he was also a theist, but he was not a Christian. And he brought up to me some things about the production of the Bible that just sounded a little weird. And then I started hearing about apocryphal texts from some of my other friends. And I finally just thought, none of this sounds like what I was taught in the Josh McDowell <laughs> apologetics course. And I also <laughs> started thinking it seemed really weird to me. I don't know how familiar you are with Church of Christ, but it's kind of like just rite of Baptist. And so... Mm -hmm. They are like super Bible believing, right? Like they promote the church as like literal biblical church. And I thought it's a little strange now that people are asking me about it that I don't know anything about the history of the Bible. Like I know the Bible content stories, but I don't know anything about how this book came to exist. And that seemed real weird to me because I was going to a church that said this book is the word of God. And I was like, shouldn't we be having lots of lessons on mm -hmm. all about the Bible? Like learning everything about the Bible, like how it came to be, who collected the letters, how did they pick what went in and what didn't go in? And, and I, I realized I didn't know anything about that. And I thought it was real strange because it seemed like something the church person should know. And so, mm -hmm. because that hit me as really odd, I was like, I need to go see what what's the story here. Because we, in all my years of going to church, I'd never had a class on that topic. And so I went and I started looking up how the Bible got put together. And the more I read, the more I was like, oh, my. <laughs> right? Like, this is not what I expected at all. Um, and by the time I got to the end of that story, I was just like, okay, so this is just a book. And it sort of wrecked the Bible for me as far as being the Word of God. I, I, I shook that pretty much after what I read. And then when I went to my pastor and I said, hey, just letting you know, I read some stuff and you might want to know about it because um, this is way different than what we're preaching and we've never really studied it. So I don't know if you even know about it, but here's some stuff. And I've got these questions. I don't think this is the word of God. And I don't think we should be saying that based on what I learned. And so I had meetings with the preacher. And at the end of it, when I was asking him, how do you know that these books are inspired? Like, how do you know this? Like wh the books themselves don't even claim it. And so he went into one of the books and he had this passage that he quoted that had something to do with um, inspiration. And I said, but what about Luke? I was like, Luke at the beginning of the book says he just re did research. He says he went and he talked to people and that he, you know, 
made a story based on the people that he talked to and he was delivering that to somebody that had asked him to go and get that information. And I said, that's not, Mm -hmm. he's not saying he's inspired by God. So why do we say that Luke is inspired by God? And he goes, do you want me to to show you that they're all claiming inspiration, like every single book in the Bible? And I said, well, yeah, that's what we're telling people. And he said, well, I can't do that. And I was like, well, then why are you telling this to people? And he said, because I have to believe that God had a hand in it. And so literally he was saying that the Bible was the foundation for his theology. And then when I said the Bible comes into question, so what happens to your theology? And he just says, well, now I go back to God and say that I just think God had to be involved, even though there's no Bible telling me that that's the case. Mm. And that made me realize that that was no better than the Catholics that we criticized from the pulpit when we said, why do they listen to the Pope? How do they know the Pope is behind God? Or, you know, that God is behind the Pope, I guess. And I was like, we're pretty much doing the same thing. We're just saying God is behind this book, but the book doesn't say it. Luke doesn't say it. Why are we telling people that Luke, that God inspired Luke? Luke doesn't say God inspired him. In fact, he says he did research. And so I felt like that this wasn't okay. And I ended up finally leaving that church. Now for 10 years, I still believed in God. I still went out and I thought, okay, God, I mean, to me, God existed. And so even if the church was wrong or even if Christianity wasn't right, it didn't matter. There was a God and I was going to find that God. If that God wanted me to find that God, then I would find that God and he would see that I was working really hard to get to the truth because I'd always been taught the truth is what mattered. And when I saw my church basically saying the truth wasn't that important, (laughs) um, it was real disappointing for me, you know, but I didn't, I wasn't disappointed out of my belief because I still believed, but I was real disappointed in my church, right? And, and the response mm-hmm. that I got. And I just expected more integrity, I think, from, from a pastor that had, that had preached to me about truth for so long. And everybody has their own story, but you were asking what hit me, and that's what hit me. And so then it was just 10 mm-hmm. years of talking to different people about what did because I was looking for then what is God? If God is not defined by the book that I've always thought defined God, then what does define God? I looked everywhere. And ultimately, what I finally realized for myself, what I came to as far as a conclusion was, if there's a God, that God is everything. You know, there's nothing that wouldn't be encompassed in that God. That God would be love. That God would be hate. That God would be light. That God would be dark. He would be good. He would be evil. He would, there would be nothing outside of that God because that God would be the largest thing that could be, and it would absorb and encompass everything. God would be everything. And then I stopped and I said, that's the universe. (laughs) I just described the universe. And I was like, so is there something else? And I, you know, if somebody wants to show me something else, I'm open to seeing something else. But that's kind of, Mm -hmm. that was my journey and that's where I came to. Okay. Um, And I'm glad you said that that was, that's the universe because you're right. And God is the creator of that universe. But I want to go back to how it, would you ever say that you were born again? Would you ever say that you were saved? Yeah, I was baptized. I was baptized into okay, Jesus. Okay, well, mm, okay. Oh, all right. I didn't write that one down. And you heard, Ray Comfort was on, oh, it's been a while back. I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard that broadcast with Ray and and um, Matt. And I, I, I'll say this, and you might be shocked for me to say this, but Ray Comfort is an unbeliever. And that does, might sound does weird he ass- to a lot. Does he assert that or are you asserting that on his behalf? I am asserting that because okay. Ray Comfort teaches a false gospel. And when I listen, I've listened to probably as many of his podcasts as I have of the atheist experience over the last, I don't know, eight, 10 years. And um, Ray Comfort says things like, uh, you need to turn for your sins or uh, you need to uh, live in holiness and all this mock that scripture doesn't dictate that you do in order to be saved. And it's as simple as believing. And being and baptized, on the other, right? He that believeth no, and is baptized no, no. shall be saved. Yeah. He that believeth not shall and be damned. That, uh, that baptism is not in water. We don't throw water after baptism. See, that's what the Church of Christ teaches, and it's not okay. So you take it baptism. as a nu- you that's take it as spiritual. some other type of baptism. Okay, that's a spiritual baptism. Okay. Well, 
I've been, well, that's what it has to be because what if someone believes in they are in outer space and on a two-year mission? How are they going to be baptized? Well, there's a lot of people that you've got to, wait a minute, when I went to church, it was like, how, what, hap- what happens if a, if a nine-year-old dies? Well, was he a believer? I mean, <laughs> what if he wasn't baptized? It's, your water baptism. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, what if you've got a kid that really isn't at an age where they can be accountable and they die? Well, I don't know. That's got something to do with what, what they believe with God. No, but that's, what I'm saying is, you, you have you belief. have ages where you're not old enough to understand these theological concepts, and there's nothing in the Bible that says you're saved if you die before you understand them or before they're preached to you. What about people that have never been preached to? Well, I don't know about those straw men. No, All they're not straw men. There's people that have never Listen. heard the gospel. And what you're saying is it can't be a water baptism because some people wouldn't be able to avail themselves of it. I'm saying there's people right now that can't avail themselves of Christianity because they live in situations where they've got no access to the word that you think is the word of God. So those well, people— I have to believe that because the Bible says that every the, bapti- uh, the gospel will be preached to every creature, I have to believe that. Right, and but I it's not true. That. You don't know that. Yeah, I do. How do you know that? Because there are people the on... The will be preached. Yes, I know. No, it says that it was, that it's already been. But the problem is there are places on this planet where it has not been preached. Not yet. Yes, right, not yet. Mm-hmm. And so when well, those people die, <laughs> when those people die, what happens to them? Hello? I'm still here. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to ask you about your deconversion. Right, but you said, wait a minute, you rejected a something by saying that, well, if a, then a person wouldn't be able to be saved because they couldn't avail themselves of the water. And I'm saying there's a lot of, with, your, with your own theology, you've got situations where people wouldn't be saved because they couldn't avail themselves of the word of God according to what you consider the word of God. So they would be condemned and to hell as well because they didn't even have an option to make the choice. Does that mean you're wrong? Because... That means that there, because of the way that the world is, the created world, in our hearts, we know that there is a creator. Right, but they wouldn't know it's Jesus. If you, well, if they seek, they might not know his name. They might not know they anything just, about they him. They, might, they wouldn't be able to avail themselves of a res- resurrection they never heard of. We don't know how God's going to reach those people. Thank you. And you don't know what God would do with a person in space on a two-year mission who didn't have water. No, we don't. We also don't know. They might go to hell even if they believe. They might go to hell even if they believe, and you don't know that's wrong. Not if they're baptized in the Spirit. That's because that's what you believe, and you believe it because there's no water on the spaceship, but you will sit there and say, when I I point out people that can't do what you say they need to be saved, you say, well, God has to sort that out. How much traveling have you done? (laughs) Very little. Yeah, I think if you did some traveling that you would see that there are lots of people in situations that you can't even imagine. And uh, the notion that the Word and Jesus and God is going to get to them in the first place or that they heard it and disregarded it. Or that they heard the right version. Or the right version because, yeah. yes, this is this is kind of patently absurd. Yeah, there, there are a lot of false gospels out there as I, I think they're said, all false. Like I said, yeah. I think they're all false. I think yours well, is false too. No. Yes. No. Yes. The, the one that we celebrate is not false. I believe it is. I, the Jesus who died on the cross for your sins, that is not the false God. I don't believe that Jesus died on the cross Anything for else? my sins. Me neither. I don't believe it. Well, nope. He did. No, he didn't. Nope, and he, he didn't. rose again. No, he, he didn't. He did what? Nope. But you will find that out one day. No, nope. you'll find out you're wrong yeah, one day. Hoping, Being atheist means you never look, get to we say, can, I told you so. We can do so. this. We can do this all day long. You can say, I'm right, and I can say, I'm right. But what is your evidence? How do we know you're, well, you're right and I'm wrong? You're looking for the wrong thing. No, I'm mm-hmm. saying how you say one thing and I say the other. How do we tell who's right? I'm right because... The scriptures dictate that I need to believe, and that's what I do. So and you're right because you a book, right? Well, I've read The God because Delusion. I'm right because a book. 
No, I'm right because I'm right because that's what God says. No, you're saying that's what God says, and I'm him, saying God didn't say it. Show me how well, you know this is true. Because I read the Holy Bible. And how do you know the too? Bible is true? Is every book true? No. Okay, so what makes you think is, this book is true? Why do you believe this book is true? Why do you believe this book is true? Until you believe and get on this side. I was on that side. The Bible, so was I it. was on that side. Yep. Been so there. so well, I was there. You tell me what I needed to know that I didn't know. Well, well, that's the thing because you weren't there. Yes, I was. Yes, we yeah. were. That's really yes, offensive. I was. You cannot be separated from God if you actually were saved. Well, then don't and worry about I'm me because God still accepts me because I was with God, right? So that means that's I'm right. still if saved. If you were saved, yeah. then you are saved. Okay. Well, then if you've you got are, nothing to worry are. about. I'll see you in heaven. <laughs> hey, I'm glad that atheists go to heaven as long as they used to be Christians. There will be a lot of very bad people in heaven. Yes. <laughs> I believe it if there's a heaven. <laughs> oh, I don't like your God very much. Oh, no, there will be a lot of very bad people in and hell. And there will be a lot of good a people lot of in them. hell. There will, absolutely. Yeah. Be so that is a messed up yeah. system, right, where that ends up where good people are rewarded and evil people, I mean, where, where bad people are rewarded and evil people are condemned. I, I think well, that's Well, actually, pathetic. that's a very, very good God who says all you need to do to make it to heaven is believe in him. So you don't have to be that's a decent kind of human being. You just have to believe the right thing. You can be a crap Candle human being, right. treat people it's, like garbage, yep. and believe the right thing, yep. and you think that's morality. Well, I think that's what the scriptures say. That Do you, you agree believe. with it? I believe that's what the scriptures say. I'm not advocating Do, doing you it. Don't, so you don't advocate for the scriptures? I think you will be a very bad witness if you do it, and that you will... You're gonna Do you disagree with what your God is doing? Do you think it's wrong? As far as allowing people into heaven who only believe? No, yeah, because if, by rewarding wicked people and condemning evil people, you think you're worshiping the right God? What the hell would Satan be like? By rewarding people who believe in him. He died on the right. cross. There's nothing well, more Well, God, to I mean, do. Hitler, Hitler rewarded people who, who were, you know, were on his side, too, and condemned well, a lot Hitler of good people that God. weren't. It sounds like he is. Your God sounds well, a lot no, like Hitler. You know, torturing Stop. good people, torturing good people and rewarding, I mean, and rewarding the evil is what you're promoting people as. That he, he died for you wow. and anyone that he died for that he yeah. needs to believe in him. Okay. And that's all he asked you to do. I think your religion is morally bankrupt. We're going on to another call. Yeah. Because that, I mean, I think Renee made her point. I mean, she outright said a religion that rewards the wicked and punishes the good is A-OK. -okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating for it, but I'm a follower. Mm -hmm. So, you and know, I'm you a believer. Follow, yeah, you're, you're wrong. But I, I'm thinking that made the point. And I hope people who are religious and who heard that call are 